You know how Google used to name all their updates after desserts? Yeah, well, Android 13 would have been also called Tiramisu. Don't believe me? Take a close look at the quick settings panel. But of course, Google doesn't want the public to know about this. It's just a code name used by Google employees internally. And Tiramisu, or Android 13, has only been around for two months and is going to get updated until July. Android 13, I just barely got Android 11. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I didn't think it was going to arrive this fast either, yet here we are. It's currently in developer preview two, the very early stages of development, so it's got plenty of bugs and things that need to get fixed. Plus with any early updates, features will get added, removed, or replaced. So if you're planning on updating now, just be aware that it won't be a completely smooth experience. Also, you're going to need a pixel and you'll need to use the Android Flash tool to get the update. You can't just get an OTA since the Android beta program is not available yet for the Android 13 update, but that will change very soon. Now, even though Android 13 is barely in its developer preview stage, there are already many new features packed within it and a good amount of possible upcoming features discovered within its code. I'll go over every new feature and any possible upcoming changes for Android 13. It's gonna be a fantastic video, so instantly drop a thumbs up to show some love to the YouTube algorithm, and let's get started with all the biggest changes that Android 13 has introduced so far. With every new Android update, notifications are one of the things that always get modified, and this time with Android 13, apps will need to ask you for your permission to send you notifications. That's right, back in Android 12 or lower, any app you installed could just start sending you notifications right out the gate and then you would need to manually turn them off within the notification panel. Pretty annoying since you'd get a bunch of random useless alerts. Now, it's an opt-in process, meaning they'll need to ask for your permission, just like how they ask to use the camera, location, etc. It's beautiful, and it really helps to lower unwanted alerts much more quickly. Unfortunately, we probably won't see many apps using this feature for a few years though, and that's because Google isn't making this feature mandatory yet. The only app that will need to request notification permissions are the ones that are targeting the Android 13 API. Notifications also have another trick up its sleeve. Whenever you long press any notification and drag it, it'll quickly open up into split screen with whatever app you're currently using. Super cool. It makes bringing up conversations much more quickly instead of needing to leave the app you're currently on. And while on the topic of notifications, whenever a third-party app is draining your battery excessively, you'll get a notification letting you know about it, that way you can force stop it. The media player has also been completely redesigned, once again. It's a bit bigger than before, when it's minimized, the output picker has bigger sliders, the album cover takes up the entire background, and the colors match the album art. I dig it, but I also didn't mind the previous version. Within the lock screen, whenever the media player is being used or you have large sums of notifications, the rest of the notifications get dropped into a pill. It honestly looks very clean and the size of the bar adapts to the number of notifications you receive. So the more alerts you have, the bigger the bar gets. Another thing about the lock screen is that some smart home controls will now allow you to access them without needing to type in your password. It won't work with every app and as of right now, Google Home doesn't support it but I'm crossing my fingers that it will give us the option to work in the future. It'll save us a few extra seconds. The quick settings panel also received a few minor changes. The power, settings, and VPN buttons got dropped to the bottom. And whenever apps are running in the foreground, you can stop them from within that same screen. There are also some new tiles within the quick settings. One is called security and privacy, uh, which moves the camera, microphone, and location into one spot cleans up the quick settings a bit and makes those three options a lot easier to find. There's also a new QR code tile to let you pull up the camera and scan a QR code much more quickly. Very useful. And since we're on the topic of tiles, developers in the future may be able to advertise their tiles as a pop-up alert within their app. It's gonna bring the quick settings a bit more life. For all the bilingual viewers out there, espero que estén bien y mucho gusto. The Android 13 has just made our lives 10 times easier by allowing us to change the language on a per app basis. Meaning if I want Amazon to be in Spanish, but leave every other app in English, I can do that. I just needed to jump into the settings, jump into system, languages and input, and within the app languages section, I can change the language for each app individually. Not every app is supported, but the majority are. 
I love the Material U design language found within Ender 12, but if I had to nitpick one thing, it would be that the colors aren't that diverse. For example, if you have a wallpaper with three dominant colors, the UI's theme will most likely only use one or two. I think Google developers noticed this because Ender 13 is planning to make the colors a lot more diverse. They may be introducing five new color modes. The current color mode we're using in Ender 12 is called Tonal Spot, but the other five are called Vibrant, Expressive, Spritz, Rainbow, and Fruit Salad. Vibrant is identical to what we have now with slightly darker colors. Expressive brings out the brighter tones and even uses colors that may not even be found within the wallpaper, but still fit in well with the overall theme. Spritz is the saddest of the bunch since it cranks down the saturation and makes the colors look almost grayish. Rainbow is also very similar to what we have now, but just has slightly brighter colors. And Fruit Salad is my personal favorite because it spreads the colors out evenly and it doesn't get too extreme with different color variations. You can even try out these themes, but as of now, they are locked behind an ADB shell command. Or you can just use an app called Repainter, which does a fantastic job at improving the material you theming. The profiles feature on Android have also received a ton of changes. When setting up new profiles on your phone to let multiple people use your device, you can now have colorful icons for the profile. Helps to differentiate each profile better instead of just using an image. There's also going to be a full screen profile switcher page if you have a big screen device, like a tablet. In the status bar, you'll get a bubble that displays the current user profile. That way it'll always be clear as to what profile is being used. Lastly, when creating a guest user in Ender 13, the owner can choose which app should be installed to the guest profile. Makes life easier for the guest user since they won't need to be searching up the apps they want to use on the Play Store. They just need to sign into their accounts. For the 1% who use a screensaver on Android, there isn't anything critically new, but the menu's UI within the settings has been redesigned. It's got grids for the selections, and I'm sure they'll have a thumbnail preview in the future. Nothing crazy, but the details do count. Android 12L was a very underrated update in my opinion that brought about a ton of improvements to Android 12. And one of its main goals was to improve the UI for larger displays like tablets or folding screens. And with this came a taskbar similar to the one found in Chrome OS. Makes accessing your favorite apps a lot easier. Well, Android 13 takes it a step further by supporting six apps instead of just five. And you get an app drawer icon to quickly bring up all your apps. It'll make using tablets 100 times better. But honestly, I low-key wouldn't mind if it was an optional feature for regular smartphones as well. It'll make switching between your favorite apps a lot easier. The most mind-blowing feature though that most of us won't ever be able to experience because getting it to work is way too technical is that you can actually run Linux or even full-blown Windows 11 on Android 13. That's literally insane. But it's primarily for developers and Google since they're going to use it to do a lot of work behind the scenes to make the updating and booting process a lot more secure. Those are all the significant new features found within Android 13 so far, but there are also a ton of smaller changes that I wanted to go over. The first is that the quick tap feature on Pixels, which allows you to double tap the back of the phone to do a certain action, now has an extra useful option. It can let you toggle the flashlight when double tapping the back. For vibrations, you cannot control the vibration intensity for your alarms and media. Before, you could only control the system ringer, notifications, and touch feedback. If you're not a fan of the giant clock on the lock screen, you can choose to disable it within the lock screen settings. You just need to toggle off the double line clock option. The magnifier feature found within the accessibility settings now follows the text you type within a text field. When you enable silent mode, all vibrations get disabled, as they should. For those who use the three button navigation, you can disable the home button's long press action, which brings up Google Assistant. Not sure why you would want to do that, but it's there. There's also going to be a new kits mode that updates the nav bar with bubbly icons for just the back and home button. There's no reasons key, but that's probably because they want the kids to concentrate on the app at hand. Bluetooth low energy audio is finally supported in Android 13, which is basically the next generation Bluetooth standard. It promises lower power consumption and higher audio quality. Plus it comes with a few extra perks like location-based audio sharing. I'm not sure how that's gonna work, but okay. Multi-device audio broadcasting and hearing aid support. All great things, but as of now, we'll have to wait for new phones, headphones, speakers, etc., to support this new Bluetooth standard. The option to customize the font and display size have been placed in the same menu, which honestly makes a lot more sense. And lastly, Do Not Disturb mode got renamed to Priority Mode. 
because that definitely won't confuse anyone. There's also a few more boring tiny changes, but I'll just throw them up on the screen to not waste your time. And if you're interested in learning more about all the new technical under the hood changes, I'll drop a link to a blog from Esper that goes over everything in detail. Finally, I wanted to go over all the exciting new upcoming possible changes that could arrive to the Android 13 in a future release. And I wanted to make it clear though that these aren't a guarantee and of course Google could just end up not including these in a future update, but it's fun to speculate. So the first is that there could be a new wallpaper mode called 3D Cinematic, which makes any 2D picture look like it's popping out at you in 3D. It even fills in background details that weren't actually there thanks to AI. Plus when you move the phone around, the wallpaper is supposed to move around with your hand. Pretty spectacular and I can't wait to try it out. Another feature that I really can't wait for is themed icons for more apps. If you can remember from last year, Android 12 introduced themed icons that match the color of your wallpaper. Some people hate it, others like it, I personally love it, but the only annoyance is that it only works for a few Google apps and nothing else. With Android 13, Google may finally allow app developers to support the same theming for their icons. It's just a matter of which app developers will choose to support it. An iOS or One UI feature that I've always been jealous of is that you can control the brightness of the LED flash. And as most of you already know, some Androids like the Pixels still only let you toggle the flash on or off and nothing else. Well, Android 13 may finally support it natively and I'm super stoked. The only string attached is that some phones won't be able to take advantage of it right away due to limitations imposed by their phone's camera. OEMs themselves will need to implement these new camera haul versions to be able to control the flashlight brightness. So depending on your phone's OEM, it could be a while till you see this feature working. There's also some leaked screenshots going around of the search bar within the app drawer being brought to the bottom. I definitely welcome this since it'll make searching for apps much easier when using the phone with one hand. On top of that, the search suggestions within the app drawer will get a lot better. It'll soon show results for matching widgets, save screenshots, and Google search suggestions. For all my gamers out there, there appears to be a new API within Android 13's code that will allow games to temporarily boost the CPU when needing to load it. It'll make the load-up process a lot quicker. The clipboard may also receive some changes and improvements such as supporting auto-clearing. So anything you copy, whether it be text, a link, image, etc., will be automatically cleared from your clipboard after 60 minutes. That way, the apps you installed can't read your clipboard at a later time. Improve security. On top of that, when you do copy an image or text, an overlay may appear just like a screenshot to let you edit the copied text or open the appropriate app if you copied an address, web link, etc. Honestly though, I could see this feature as being more annoying than useful since who wants a pop-up every time they copy text? You know the bedtime setting found within the digital well-being app? Well, the dark theme may provide the option to follow it. Another tweak within the settings is that the privacy dashboard could give you the option to show seven days of usage instead of 24 hours. Do you remember Android Beam? The feature that allowed you to tap two phones on the back to send files to one another by using NFC? Yeah, well, Google may bring that back and it's great news because let's be honest, nearby share is a way more complicated process. If you can also remember from last year, Android 12 came with harsher background restrictions for apps. And even though it does keep sketchy apps in check, it can also be a bad thing for apps that absolutely need to run heavy background processes. Apps like a terminal emulator. Well, Android 13 might end up introducing a toggle within the developer options that allows you to disable those harsher background restrictions. Anyways, that's every prominent feature found within Android 13 so far. Again, just to clarify, all these features can be removed, changed, or replaced. Nothing is 100% certain here, but it does look like a solid update so far, especially since we've seen so many new glimpses at what could come in the future to Android 13. Either way, if you found this video to be helpful and learned a thing or two, please consider dropping a thumbs up to help out the YouTube algorithm. Also, while you're at it, make sure to get subscribed with the notification bell turned on, especially since I'll be reviewing the next upcoming first beta update, and you won't want to miss out on that because there's going to be so many new features that could get introduced. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Kapow!